What's up guys, Justin here with the Rhino Essentials. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about how to deform an object using a control cage in Rhino. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so we're gonna talk about how to do this with both 2D and 3D objects. But the first thing we wanna do is we wanna take this plane right here, and we basically wanna split it up into a number of different control points that we can then use in order to edit our object. All right, so we're gonna select this object and we're just gonna type in cage edit right here. And so what that's going to do is that's going to activate that tool and it's already selected. So this goes to the second point. And so we can do this either with an object bounding box, a line, or some other ways as well. In this case, we're just going to use a rectangle because this is a flat object. And so basically what this is going to allow us to do is this is going to allow us to set a rectangle that basically sets where our control points are going to go. So in this case, for example, I'm gonna click right here. Well then, notice how it asks us for the cage parameters. So that's gonna be the number of points in here for our cage. So in this case, this is gonna divide this up basically into a four by four grid. So I'm gonna hit the enter key right here. And so then it's gonna ask us to select either global or local. So global means that the bounding box that we created will affect things that weren't in the object that we selected. Uh, local will only do the local. In this case, it doesn't matter because nothing overlaps. So we're gonna go ahead and just hit the enter key, leave it on global, and we're good to go. Well, notice what that did is that came in here and that split this whole thing up into a number of different control points. Well, if you take these points and move them around, notice what this is gonna do is it's going to deform our object based on those control point locations. So what that allows us to do is that allows us to come in here and edit these control points. And when we edit the control points, it's going to affect the shape that we have in here. So you can come in here and select multiple different control points at once and edit those just like this. So this can be a really valuable way of deforming your objects. And we'll talk about a few more examples in a minute. But first off, let's say that we were to take this object right here and do something a little bit different. So instead of when we run cage edit, instead of putting our rectangle right on our object right here, what you could do is you could create a cage that's larger than your object right here. So what that's gonna do is that's gonna allow you to set additional, or that's gonna place the control points a little outside of our object. The other thing we could do is we could also set a new number of points, right? So I could set this to eight points for U and eight points for V and hit the enter key. We'll go ahead and leave this at global, but notice how the control points it creates here are actually outside of our object. So now, if you wanted to, you could select the points that are outside of your object and it's still going to affect your object, like this, um, depending on which points you edit, right? So if I just edit this corner point right here, it's not really gonna do anything because my object isn't inside of this, but you can create control point systems that are outside of your object and use those in order to make these changes as well. So again, this gives you some really interesting functionality for creating interesting shapes in here. So this is the two-dimensional function in here, but then you can also use this for three-dimensional shapes. So let's say that we were to select this sphere, type in cage, edit right here. And in this case, we wanna go ahead and we wanna just use the bounding box of this object. So that's basically gonna be the object bounds that Rhino automatically figures out. So we're gonna select bounding box right here, and we're gonna go ahead and use the world for our cage. And then we're gonna leave our cage parameters at four by four by four, and we're gonna hit the enter key. So what that's gonna do is that's gonna come in here and that's gonna create a cage right here. We'll leave this on global and we'll hit the enter key. And so when we use that bounding box, notice how it uses the object bounds in order to create this box in here. Well now we can start selecting these different points and editing this shape. So I can take all these points and I can move them outward and it's gonna deform my object based on that movement right here. So. Um, not only can you use the movement, but you can also scale this. So if you wanted this to move like inward or something like that, notice how that's gonna be really easy to do. You could also deform this kind of like up and out or something like that if you decided you wanted to do that. But notice how it's going to deform this object based on whatever control points you move around. So let's say that we were to add a text object right here. We're gonna type in text object and we'll just add the word rhino right here. Well. What we could do is first off, notice that these objects are all select, or these objects are all in here as individual objects, right? But if we do a cage edit, it's gonna ask us to select objects. I'm gonna select these, we're gonna hit enter. But what I wanna do this time is I just wanna create a line. So instead of doing what we did before, I'm gonna create a line. I'm actually gonna duplicate this first. So we can try a couple different things. 
but we're gonna take this, run a cage edit, and we're just gonna use a line. So I'm just gonna take a line and I'm gonna draw it to a point right here. And it's gonna ask for a number of points in here. We'll go ahead and leave it at four, but you could enter a higher value if you wanted to. And we're gonna leave this on global and hit the enter key. Well now, if you look at this object, well now if you select these control points and move them like this, notice how your text shape is going to get deformed based on that location right here. So I can use this to bend things like text. Not only could you bend this on the uh, green axis, but you could also use this to bend this in a 3D direction as well, like this. So you can create bent text really easily by doing this. You could also, um, if we were to do a cage edit again, and in this case, we're gonna select a bounding box. We'll go ahead and we'll use a world coordinate system. And let's go ahead and let's leave our cage parameters at four by four. Actually, let's put them in here as six by six by probably two, actually, because that would be a lot on a very short area otherwise. But we're gonna go ahead and hit the enter key. We'll go ahead and leave this on global. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna split this object up with a 3D cage like this. And it may be better to look at this from kind of a side view like this. But what we could do is for this one, right, we can come in here and we can select the interior points. So let's go ahead and move these up a little bit. Well, notice what that's gonna do is that's gonna deform this object in the 3D space, just like this. So then we could take these, move them up like this. We might take these uh, bottom ones and move them up as well. So see how you can use this in order to deform things like your text using that control cage as well. And so one other thing to note about this is these points don't really like look very good, right? They just kind of take up a lot of space in your model. You can kind of see these bounding boxes in here. If you want to hide these control points um, until you need them again, you can just type in points off and hit the enter key. That's gonna turn your points off so that you're not seeing all these extra dots inside of your 3D workspace. And then whenever you wanna get them back, you can just type in points on like this. And we're gonna go ahead and click on this object and hit the enter key and that's gonna bring them back. So you can toggle them on and off just by selecting these control cage instances in here. So if you wanted it over here, you would do a points on you'd select this cage and hit the enter key and your points are gonna come back. All right, so leave a comment below. Let me know if you've used this tool, if you've had any issues with it. I just love having that conversation with you guys. I will link to some other Rhino tool tutorials on this page, but as always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.